morning, friends. Thank you so much for being here. My name is David, and i uh, got another practice for us today. It is St. Patrick's Day. We're in the green. Um, but for today's practice, I want to talk about acceptance. Um, this is a, uh, a lifelong practice, I feel, um, this practice of acceptance. Accepting who we are as a human being, uh, accepting our environment, accepting others for the way they are, accepting others for their belief systems, uh, accepting others for the way they live or the lifestyles that they have. Um, it, it is a forever ongoing process and it's oftentimes, at least I've found, it is ego that gets in the way that prevents us from really truly accepting um, what is being offered to us. Now, that doesn't mean we have to necessarily internalize it. I, I feel sometimes that when we hear that word acceptance, it means, oh, I have to internalize it. No, it's just allowing it to be what it needs to be. And um, I find that the more accepting that I am of life, the more accepting that I am of myself, um, it's a double-edged sword, um, not in a bad way either, but um, in the yogic practices, they talk about accepting and just allowing you know yourself to be we don't have to put any window dressing up we don't have to cover it up um, we sometimes can end up uh, overacting or over characterizing over characterizing but it's eventually coming to a realization that you are fine just the way you are and that you are accepted here just as you are uh, the more that we can see that we are accepted here, and it's not that we need somebody else's acceptance, although I understand that that's nice. Um, it's not seeking acceptance from others anymore. It's just accepting ourselves with where we're at, the decisions we made, um, the choices that uh, uh, we've made throughout our lifetimes, uh, sometimes the accidents or the trauma that's happened to us. Uh, we are all experiencing life very, very differently. And in the realization of that, I found it's quite helpful to be a little bit softer, to be kinder. Uh, I wasn't always that way, uh, to be truthful. But, uh, um, but that's also my idea that I have in my head of myself too. So uh, understand that that comes from that space. But there's certainly some truth to it too. And I find that the more accepting that I am of life, rather than pushing life away and saying, no, this isn't for me, that if I embrace life and say, wow, this is for me, like, this is amazing. Um, even the things that maybe I've been conditioned, because a lot there's a lot of conditioning that's out there, and that conditioning prevents us from really experiencing what life is all about. But because that conditioning gets in the way, um, we may automatically go, no, 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 I don't, I don't want anything to do with that. Um, it's helpful to look at that. Now, I still feel that it's important to practice some of the basic philosophies, like don't harm other people and other things and other beings to the best of our ability. Don't lie, steal, and cheat to the best of our ability. Uh, try to conserve our energy to the best of our ability. Um, um, try to uh, uh, practice non-attachment. When we practice non-attachment, everything is acceptable too. We allow things to be as they are, and we don't have to necessarily force ourselves into it too much. Now, I have some quotes today I wanted to share, and then we'll get into our practice. The first one's by Stuart Onan. He says, You couldn't relive your life, skipping the awful parts, without losing what made it worthwhile. You had to accept it as a whole like the world, or the person you love. A couple quotes from Lao Tzu. He said, Life is a series of natural and spontaneous changes. Don't resist them. That only creates sorrow. Let reality be reality. Let things flow naturally forward in whatever way they like. And what I get from that is, and I'll just speak for myself here, is put less David into it and just accept how things are. Um, put less of me into a situation. For instance, when I try to teach, obviously I give anecdotal um, um, 
pointings from my own life but to the best of my ability and to all of ours i find it's a value to just try to put less of ourselves into a situation and just allow it to be what it needs to be when we allow it to be what it needs to be it shows us and if we learn a little bit of practice and patience the right words the right actions in our ability to serve um, is even stronger than before stephanie perkins said the more you know who you are and what you want the less you let things upset you so with that said um, let's go ahead and get started i have a few more quotes here that i'll share um, but i do want to get started I had a little bit of a technical uh, issue with starting up the camera this morning so want to get into our flow. Okay, let's start out on our backs. And as we start out on our backs, let's place the left hand over the heart, right hand on the belly. And begin to let go of your day. Let go of your week. Let go of what's next and what's to come. Feel the inhales and the exhales. Feel the depth of the breath, the pace of the breath, and the balance in the breath. Just a gentle affirmation for our practice. I accept myself with where I'm at, right here and right now. I accept myself where I am at, right here, right now. Let's begin to breathe together. Please take a long, slow, full, deep breath in. Fill your lungs up. Exhale, let it go. Long, slow, deep breath in. Fill lungs up. Exhale, letting it go. Long, slow, deep breath in. Exhale, letting it go. Continue to breathe on your own. And as you breathe on your own, check in with your body, observing any tension, tightness, soreness, and balances of any kind. And as we move through our practice, breathe deep, take breaks, most importantly, listening to your body and how your body feels today. Accepting where you're at. And let's set an intention for our practice, a focused goal that you're working on, a dream maybe that you have. Please take a long, slow, full, deep breath in. Feel the navel rise, chest expand, collarbones spread, shoulders down the back, long spine, relax the face, lips, eyes, mouth, and forehead. Hold your breath at the top of the inhale. Then as you hold your breath, focus on your intentions, see them happening, be clear, be specific with them. Exhale, letting it go. Smooth breath in. Smooth breath out. And let's do an OM together. Inhale. Fill lungs up. And exhale. 
exhale, gently release the arms down along the sides, softly blinking the eyes open. All right, begin to breathe in through the nose, out the nose, ujjayi breath. And start to move the fingers, move the toes, circling out your wrists and circling out the ankles. And so in this practice of acceptance, as we've moved in the practice so far, what part of the practice have you accepted and not accepted? Did you accept some of the share or was there resistance to that? Was there judgment that came up? Um, were you resistant to laying down on your back and breathing slowly, or was this accepted? When it came to oming, was there resistance, or was there acceptance? Opposite direction, circle out the wrists, circle out the ankles. You know, we do this all the time, and it happens so quickly, we may not even realize it, how quickly we either accept things or begin to resist them and judge them. And it's important to know this because it takes a lot of energy. And that's why I said at the very beginning, conservation of energy, release the arms down along the sides. On an inhale, sweep the arms up and over the head. Interlace the hands, press your palms towards the back. Point your toes forward and lengthen through your entire body. The reason why I mentioned that at the beginning of the practice was because you know, where we're not accepting, we are spending a lot of energy resisting and pushing back and forcing our way and saying, no, I'm right, or that's incorrect, rather than just going, okay, that's what it is. That's where this person's at, or just not even saying that, actually, just saying, that's what it is. Beautiful. Take a long, slow, full, deep breath in. Exhale, release the arms down along the sides. And that's not to be a pacifist, because pacifist means to force something too. On the inhale, reach the arms up and over the head, other pinky on top. Flex to the wrists and press the palms. Good. Curl the toes back towards your nose, press the heels forward. And let me clarify that just a little bit. But sometimes actively seeking to go another direction is also um, an antithesis of accepting too. To accept is just to accept. Take a long, slow, full, deep breath in. That means we're allowing it to be without ourselves being involved in the process. Deep breath in. Exhaling. And deep breath in. Exhale, gently release the arms down along the sides. All right, let's go slow here. Inhale, slide the right foot in towards the right buttocks. Exhale, slide it forward. Let's go to the left side. Inhale, slide the left foot in. Exhale, slide the left foot forward. Go smoothly. Feel your foot on the ground. Inhale, right foot slides in. Exhale, right foot slides out. Inhale, left foot slides in. Exhale, left foot slides out. One more time. Inhale, right foot slides in. Exhale, right foot slides out. Inhale, left foot slides in. And exhale, left foot slides out. On an inhale, bring your right knee into your chest. Interlace your hands around the right shin. And from here, just gently rock your right leg side to side. Back and forth, back and forth. Don't force it. You know, when it comes to tension and stress and pain in our bodies, are we resistant to it or are we accepting of it? You know, I find this one to be um, an interesting one because sometimes we want to push pain away or we want to resist pain. But I have found in the healing process, part of it is just blatantly accepting it for what it is. Like, okay, I accept this pain. And when we practice accepting, it doesn't mean retelling the story of how the pain started. Although having a basic understanding of that's important. But to carry on that story two, three, four, five years later after the pain has been with you, 
Now that is something completely different, but that's what a lot of people do. First we have to come to acceptance, and then we can start to, you know, do the work necessary in order to work through it and beyond it. Left hand to the left hip, right hand to the right knee, we start to circle the right knee out. Go slow, take your time. And I'm not saying by any means am I the authority on this, I'm just saying that I have some experience with it and I find it's helpful to share and articulate because the more that we can accept ourselves with where we are at, the less resistance we have to the rest of the world and the people that are in it and the things that are in it. Circle your right knee in the opposite direction. Be gentle on the leg. Be gentle. To your chest, flex the right foot, flex the left foot. Now, oftentimes, you know, we start to have, have this talk, and there's always the individuals that are out there that'll be the devil's advocate, and I accept that too. It'll be like, well, how do you accept everything? So, if someone hurts you and does something to you, do you just accept that? Well, um, there's a couple different things. That's just sort of like a um, kind of like a cover all. One, I don't have that many, I'm not inviting that many people into my life anymore that are personally hurting me. So let's start there. Um, what sort of relationships that are we having that are creating that? I recognize that accidents do happen. And so if someone accidentally hurts me, I recognize that, you know, that individual must be going through something and it was my timing to be there at that time. So uh, I don't try to fight that. Um, I just allow it to be. What I can do is accept the situation for what it is, but learn to speak out about it in a loving and compassionate way. I find that the less stress that I'm holding on to personally, uh, I'm able to move through a situation with a lot more ease and grace rather than personalizing it, making it all about me and uh, going from that, moving from that angle. Uh, I found that moving from that angle, there's a lot more personal suffering that tends to show up. So that's sort of my response to that for the devil, ad, dad, devil advocates out there that are, you know, um, uh, that might have a question about acceptance coming up. But also I'm in the realization of just, I don't try to fight life anymore. It's just what it is. And I know when to put my arms down and, and to, to let go especially when I feel like the ego is getting in the way. Take a long, slow, full, deep breath in. Exhale, release the right leg down. And I share that. That does not make me special or anything like that. That's just sharing a teaching that I find valuable and important, and I use myself as an example. Please bring your left knee into your chest. As you bring your left knee into your chest, gently rock it side to side into the inner groin. You know, what about ourselves do we not accept? You know, what about ourselves are we constantly forcing and judging and trying to change rather than simply embracing it and recognizing that, you know, uh, it's just that the way it is. You know, maybe one foot's bigger than the other foot, or maybe, you know, I mentioned this last week, maybe you're balding. It's okay. Maybe, uh, you know, you have a gap between your teeth. It's beautiful. Maybe, um, I don't know, maybe you have a freckle. That, that, remember, all these things that we have, they add to the uniqueness of who we are. But so many times we get caught up in the narrative of somebody else to say, oh, you're wrong for having this, even though you were born that way. Now we become self-conscious about it. Now we don't accept ourselves. Now we judge ourselves. And then we also end up judging other people too. 
Left hand to the left knee, slowly circle your left knee out. Because whatever it is about ourselves that we don't quite accept, we are also unaccepting of that of other people too. And it may not be in the same exact way, but wherever we have shadows of unacceptance, that shadow of unacceptance is what we are also not accepting about the rest of the world. Breathe. Two. One. Opposite direction. Circle the leg out. No, um, I'm doing a 30-day challenge of taking a cold shower every morning. And uh, it first started off with an ice bath the other day. And I was like, you know, I'm going to do this and just accept the cold. Because so many times we don't accept the elements, and we just kind of push them away. And um, yesterday was the first day that I took a cold shower. And oh my God, that was so cold. <laughs> I was not ready for that. Um, and then, but the rest of the day I felt super energized. Uh, bring your left knee back into your chest. And this morning I took another one and Flex the left foot, flex the right foot. Part of the acceptance process was accepting the fact that the initial cold um, doesn't necessarily feel that great at first because of my conditioning towards it. The shivering that comes along with it. Um, I didn't want to accept that either. But what I learned was, just going back to the breath, was that if you just accept the cold as the cold and don't personalize it, you can begin to relax into the cold. When you relax into the cold, you can begin to gain your breath. When you begin to regain the breath, you have more control over the body. So it was more, it's been, it's only two days, but it's already a practice and just accepting that this is a choice that I made, but you know, um, I can choose to take this potentially uncomfortable situation and turn it into something that is a really healthy and helpful teaching for those that, you know, want to practice with that. Now at USC, I've been teaching this past week hydrotherapy and the benefits of cold water therapy. And it's something that I used to do in the past, but just didn't, don't do anymore. But I find it is such a helpful practice um, to reground ourselves and recenter ourselves. Take a long, slow, deep breath in. Exhale, let it go. One more deep breath in. Exhale, let it go. Shake your left leg out. Let's bring both knees into our chest. And let's start to rock up and down the length of the spine. So we rock up and down. Let's get some momentum. Rocking up and down so much. Let's rock over our feet and then come onto our hands and knees into a tabletop position. So we come into a tabletop position, shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. If you want to use the blocks, you can. You don't have to use them. Let's just move through about five cow and cats. Go slow. Inhale, pull the heart forward, look forward. Exhale, chin to chest, round the spine. Inhale, pull the heart forward, look forward. Exhaling around the spine. Inhaling, pull the heart forward, look forward. Exhaling around the spine. Two more. Inhale, pull the heart forward, look forward. Exhale, round the spine, and inhale, pull the heart forward, look forward. Exhaling, round the spine. Finding a 
neutral spine. And from here, pick your hands to your blocks if you have them, place your blocks on their highest height, and slide your right foot forward, and then bend into your right knee. As you bend into your right knee, right knee over the right ankle, press the right foot down, lift the chest, sit the hips and pelvis forward and down. Now when we come to acceptance, um, first of all, recognizing that acceptance is conditioned. You know, if I'm, ex for instance, if I was raised in a family to only accept a certain type of people or a certain type of behavior, then that's based off of conditioning. And most likely, that's because the people in my family prior to me were hurt by something. So they had to push life away in some way, shape, or form. Um, we see this with the acceptance of people, with the acceptance of sexes, with the acceptance of colors, with the acceptance of gender, uh, with the acceptance of socioeconomic situations. And so we have this malbelief or misbelief that, oh, because I'm this and they're that, that I'm not, I cannot be accepting of that. And if you just simplify it like that, how silly is that? How really silly is that, that we play these mind games based off of shapes and forms of what is, oh, I can accept that, but I can't accept that. Um, I certainly feel that there are behavior patterns, like I do not tolerate violence. I mean, I accept that if people are going to be violent, that that's how they are. I recognize that they're conditioned to be that way, that it is not just accident, but I also can accept where I am at in my own teachings and realizations and choose not to engage in a behavior that is violent because I know better. Take a long, slow, deep breath in. Exhale, bend into your right knee. Long, slow, deep breath in. Exhale, bend right knee. Inhaling. And exhale. On the inhale, take the hips back. And then straighten through your right leg. Flex the right foot. Press your right heel down into the ground. Now gently pull your right hip back. As you pull your right hip back, you'll begin to feel a stretch through the right hamstring maybe up into the right hip, maybe into your right lower back. Lengthen your spine. Find a little bit of a lift in the chest. Deep breath in. Exhale. Ann Landers said, Some people believe holding on and hanging in there are signs of great strength. However, there are times when it takes much more strength to know when to let go and then to do it. And so at a certain point in time, friends, every single one of us will have to accept the same exact thing. And I think that we all know what that is. It's, some, it's a commonality. We've already shared one commonality in this lifetime, and that's that we were born into this. We all must practice acceptance of the passing of this lifetime, too. And that's a challenge for a lot of people. But I find if we choose to, rather than ignore or push death away, but to accept it as something that is a thing that is bound, no pun on the word bound here, but bound to happen, we can be significantly more compassionate towards others, we can be fearless towards it, and we can embrace it a little bit more and recognize that every single person is going to go through that. Why not be just a little bit more gentle on each other as well as on ourselves? On an inhale, please bend back into your right knee. Sit into your hips and look forward. Exhale, slide the right foot back, right knee down. Slowly, on an inhale, step your left foot forward. Sit into your hips. Sink the hips and pelvis forward and down. 
Now as you bend into your left knee, left hip in, right hip draws forward, lift the chest, press the top of the right foot down, good, right thigh moving forward, chest lifting, reach the crown of the head upwards, take a long, slow, full, deep breath in, exhale, Inhale, exhale, continue breathing on your own. Now it's quite helpful should you have the courage to do this, to do an inventory on what about yourself you don't accept. You know, were you teased growing up? And so because of that, whatever you were teased about, there's something that we don't quite accept yet. Okay. There may be a little bit of grieving that's necessary to understand and to get closer to the acceptance phase, but you know, the last phase in, in any sort of grievance is finally learning to accept. And the moment we begin to accept and let go, everything else begins to flow in from that state of acceptance. Think about all the times where, um, you know, maybe you pushed something away, but then finally allowed it in. How beautiful that turned out for yourself. Take a long, slow, full, deep breath in. Exhale, take the hips back and lengthen through your left leg. Flex the left foot. Press your left heel down. As you press the left heel down, left hip back, right hip forward, breathe into your left hamstring, try to lengthen your spine a little bit more. Flex your left foot just a touch more. Breathe into the shin. And allow yourself, and this, here's the thing, when I say allow yourself to accept, it's not yourself that's accepting, it's the idea of yourself. When we strip ourselves of the idea of ourself, I'll say that again, when we strip the self of the idea that we have of the self, we see that the true self is always in a state of acceptance. It accepts the fact that you dress it up, that we dress it up, with personalities and characters we like to play out and act out. Yes, let's go deep on this. Let's look at that. The idea we have of the self masks the self. The true self is always in a state of acceptance. Slowly bend your left knee, sit low into your hips. And exhale, slide your left foot back. Good. Let's come all the way down onto our bellies. As we come down to our bellies, let's reach your left hand forward. If you need to use a strap, use a strap, but bend your right knee, reach back with your right hand, grab your right foot. Bring the knees together, bring your right heel towards your buttocks. Now try to reach your right knee back, crawl the left hand further forward. Now, if you can, try to lift your right thigh away from the ground. Deep breath in. Exhale. Full breath in. Exhaling. Inhale. Exhaling. And inhale. Exhale. You know, accepting if we're stiff, accepting if we're tight. If we can accept that we're stiff or tight, then then we can start to 
you know, maybe add a little bit more movement or stretches or um, um, practices in our life that will allow us to open up a little bit, release the right foot down. It's when we're in a state of denial, bend the left knee, reach back with the left hand, grab the left ankle, left foot. When we are in a state of denial, that's what can get us into trouble. And that's where we can suffer because if we're denying something, then we are not accepting of it. As you bring your left heel in towards your buttocks, reach your left knee back, breathe into the left quadricep. Crawl your right hand forward just a touch more. Long, slow, deep breath in. Exhale, let it go. Long, slow, deep breath in. Exhaling, letting it go. Long, slow, deep breath in. And exhale, letting it go. Good. Reach your left thigh back just a little bit more. Maybe lift it away from the ground for three, two, one. Gently release the foot down. Slide your hands back by your low ribs. And then press yourself into a child's pose. You press yourself into a child's pose. Knees wide apart. Big toes touch. Crawl the hands forward. You know, in the practice of teaching, I found this. You know, when I started teaching at USC five and a half years ago, um, I couldn't really relate to college kids that much because I had already had so much conditioning in my adult life uh, beyond college that it was very challenging. And so at first, when I first started teaching there and I reflect, I wasn't as fully accepting of where these students were at. And I was also comparing these students to what I went through at the Air Force Academy which wasn't, isn't very fair at all. And when I look back at that person I, that was teaching, that version of me, I say to myself, oh my gosh, I was so small at how I chose to look and, and how I chose to act. You know, and it's a very subtle thing. I think you notice these things over the years after teaching. Um, but now I can certainly recognize with where I'm at that I'm much more accepting of of where these students are at and also where I'm at too because back then I could see where I wore a mask and I would try to pretend to be a certain way in order to gain a student's acceptance. And think about this in your own personal life or at work. How many times do you act a certain way in order to be accepted by somebody else? Like that is such a... Um, it's, uh, it, it really plays with your mind. But it's working through that and working beyond that. With the next inhale, walk the hands in, lift your chest up. Let's go ahead and sweep our legs forward out in front of us. As we take our legs forward, lightly shake the legs out. Flex through the feet. Inhaling, arms reach up. Exhale, seated forward fold, fold forward. If you touch your toes, great. If not, that's okay too. Lean your heart forward. If you have a strap, maybe you're using a strap. Uh, but I give that personal anecdotal example because if we were to look back, you know, and looked at how we first started a job, you know, how much of that when we first started a job was just doing everything we could in order to be accepted by individuals um, rather than doing the work that we needed to do. How much extraneous energy did we spend? I think about my medical device days when I sold medical devices, how I would do all these different things in order to be accepted by an office, in order to get in, to be able to make a sale. 
and sometimes that meant not being who i really was at the heart of all of it and also at that time i didn't really know who i was either fully and i feel like that's a lifelong process i'm still learning that even though i've been teaching for 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 years now but it's putting down that mask and recognizing that when i allow myself to put down my mask i'm giving permission subtly for other people to put down their mask too that they don't have to act a certain way in front of me because i'm not acting a certain way in front of them take a long slow full deep breath in exhale fold in press the inner thighs down flex the feet Reach your hips back a little bit more. Hold here for five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Inhale, lift the chest up. Lightly shake the legs out. And let's bring the soles of our feet together. As you bring the soles of the feet together, take the hands to the ankles, the arches of the feet, and just let the outer knees move down towards the ground. You know, in, in another area of field that I find acceptance is important is, um, you know, many of you know that I worked in uh, the addiction field, and there was a period of life um, where I was addicted too. And the funny thing is, um, I would judge other addicts even though I was a bit of an addict too in some areas. And looking back at that, I, I accept that that's where I was at. But now more than ever, you know, when you have someone that's sick coming in that's, you know, abused drugs or alcohol or substances for periods of time, um, the last thing you want to do is reject them. Um, they're everybody's working through something and everybody has a different coping mechanism and who am I to judge you know what addiction somebody has and what doesn't the fact of the matter is is that they're showing up in front of me so am I supposed to deny that or do I embrace that and help somebody through that and we get caught up in oh you know the separation of addicts but a workaholic is just as much of an addict you know a uh, um, an exercise aholic it's all about exercise, exercise, exercise. That's just as much of an addict. Okay, the more that we see this for what it is, and instead of judging it, but just accept it for what it is, then we can start to move with it and move through it. But we also have to find that centered space inside of ourselves. And getting centered, again, that's, it's, a lifelong practice as well but the more that we can bring awareness to it the easier it becomes take a long slow full deep breath in exhale lean forward fold in um, you know something that I've had to come to acceptance is, is because I do teach a lot my body feels that and if I over teach then uh, what am I teaching? If I overteach, my body becomes you know, sore and tense and tight, and then it's more prone to injury, which was what was happening uh, over COVID, was I just found that I was teaching too much, so I had to back off. Because where I wasn't accepting of the pain and tension and just trying to block that off, it only exacerbated it. So you know, we have to learn to accept the things that are showing up for us, and then pivot from that place. Slowly lift your chest back up. Take the hands to the outer knees. Bring the knees together. And then let's cross our legs. As we cross our legs, crossing the shins, hands on knees, palms face down. Lift chest up, inhale. Exhale, circle the head out. There's a uh, serenity prayer that we say um, at uh, the centers that I work at. And if you don't know it, I'll just share it with you. But it's 
God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change and the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Uh, after saying that, I don't know how many times now, thousands of times, roll the shoulders out, um, the meaning behind that to accept the things that I cannot change. Now, I know that I cannot necessarily change others. I know that I cannot go back and change my past. But if I choose to have the courage to look, to change the things that I can, and essentially changing the things I can, that's how I look at life. That's how I view life. That is how I approach life. That's how I speak towards life. That's how I can change my thoughts through positive affirmation. Circle your spine now. The more I choose to embrace and have the courage to change what I can, I then begin to notice through the practice of doing that, I get the experience. So I gain the experiential knowledge to know the difference of what I can change and what I can't change. Living authentically, and this is a thing that you know you hear a lot in spiritual circles, be authentic, be authentic. Well, what does that even mean, be authentic? You know, to really embrace who we are, what we are, at the core of all of it beyond all the labels and titles that we put on ourselves, beyond the brevity and bravado that we wear around where we puff our chest up and show it to each other. Look beyond that. That's still training wheel phase of living. You know, live beyond that. Inhale, lift your chest up. Exhale, switch the crossing of the legs. And that's where we begin to find our true authenticity. We're no longer mimicking someone else's behavior where we have our own established confidence in our self. Confidence in the self as the self. Hands on knees, palms face down. Inhale, lift chest up. Exhale, circle the head in the opposite direction. Shoulders out. That feels good. So understand what authenticity really is. You don't have to force authenticity either. You don't have to fake authenticity. In fact, faking authenticity is the antithesis of being authentic. But if this feels good, you can circle your spine out. diving down. chest up. Exhale, letting it go. Inhale, arms out and up, reach up. Exhale, hands to the heart center. Inhaling, arms out and up. Exhale, hands to the heart center. Inhaling, arms out and up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Two more. Inhaling, arms out and up. Exhale, hands to heart center. And inhaling, arms out and up. Exhale, hands to the heart center. 
Inhale, elbows back, open chest. Exhale, push palms forward. Inhale, draw the hands in. Exhale, push palms forward. Inhale, draw hands in. Exhale, push palms forward. Inhale, draw hands in. Exhaling, push palms forward. Inhale, palms up, reach up. Exhale, palms down, arms down. Inhale, palms forward and up, reach. Exhale, palms forward and down. Inhale, palms up and reach. Exhale, palms forward and down. Inhale, palms up and reach. Exhale, palms forward and down. Roll the shoulders out. Good. Let's uncross the legs. Come on to our backs. Come on to our backs. Bring the knees into your chest. Give yourself a hug. Inhale. Exhale, lower your feet down towards the ground with bent knees. Separate your feet, hips distance, knees over the ankles. Inhale, lift your hips up. Interlace the hands underneath you. Work your shoulder blades underneath you. Press your forearms down. Affirmation. I accept myself just as I am, right here, right now. As you lift your hips high, press the forearms down. Unclench your buttocks. Press your heels down. Good. Lift the frontal hip points a little more for five, four, three, two, one. Full breath in. Exhale, release the hands and then lower your buttocks down towards the ground. Smooth breath in. Smooth breath out. Lengthen your left leg forward, right knee into your chest. Inhale. Exhale, twist across the body, over to your left side. Right arm reaches out to the right, right palm face up, right shoulder blade down. Full breath in. Exhaling. Long, slow, deep breath in. Exhaling. In long, slow, deep breath in. Exhaling. On an inhale, please bring your right knee back into your chest. Bring your left knee into your chest. Take your right leg forward. Long, slow, full, deep breath in. Exhale, twist across the body over to your right side. Left arm goes out to the left, left palm face up, left shoulder blade down. Inhale fully. Exhaling. Deep breath in. Exhaling. And deep breath in. Exhale. With your next inhale, bring your left knee into your chest. Bring your right knee into your chest. Give yourself one final hug and a squeeze. Take a long, slow, full, deep breath in. Fill lungs up. Sip in a little more air. Hug it all together into a tight ball. And on the exhale, release everything down towards the ground. Shavasana. Close the eyes. As you close the eyes, relax the face, the lips, the eyes, the mouth, and the jaw. Accepting this moment.
The inhales calm mind and body. The exhale, allow a gentle smile to move across the face. Dwelling in the present moment, accepting this moment, recognizing that this is the only moment. Affirmations, I accept myself just as I am. I accept the world just as it is. I accept my past for what it was. I move into an acceptance of the present moment. I am accepting of all things. I am accepting of love. Accepting of kindness. I accept the things that I cannot change. I have the courage to change the things. Take a long, slow, full, deep breath in. Exhale, let it go. Long, slow, deep breath in. Exhale, letting it go. Exhale, letting it go. Slowly begin to move your fingers and toes. Circle out your wrists, your ankles. Roll the shoulders up, back, and down. Turn the head side to side. Open and close the mouth. And with a deep, long inhale, reach the arms up and over the head. Give yourself a nice, long, extended stretch. Reach. Exhale, arms down along the side. Placing a gentle bend in your knees, roll over to your left side. Use your right hand to press yourself up into a comfortable seated position. And as you press yourself into a comfortable seated position, sharing two final quotes today, one was by Lao Tzu. He said, because one believes in oneself, one doesn't try to convince others. Because one is content with oneself, one doesn't need others' approval. Because one accepts oneself, the whole world accepts him or her. And finally, Mother Teresa said, These are the few ways we can practice humility. To speak as little as possible of oneself. To mind one's own business. Not to want to manage other people's affairs. To avoid curiosity. To accept contradictions and correction cheerfully, to pass over the mistakes of others, to accept insults and injuries, to accept being slighted, forgotten, and disliked, to be kind and gentle even under provocation, never to stand on one's dignity, to choose always the hardest. Place the hands over the heart. Take a full breath in. Exhale, let it go. We'll finish with an OM. Inhale. Oh. Inhale, fill. 
lungs up. Exhale, bow the head down towards the hands. Honoring yourselves, your practices, for showing up on your mats. We honor our friends, families, loved ones, and supporters. In gratitude for the many blessings, gifts, and abundance that's in our lives today. And in gratitude to the many teachers and guides who came along before us, who passed along these practices we call yoga. Gently releasing the hands down, softly blinking the eyes open, and lifting your chins. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. I appreciate you. As always, this practice of acceptance, it's always an evolving process. I only share from where I am and my evolution of it. But I thank you so much for being in my life. I appreciate you. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Ho'oponopono. Aho. Namaste. Thanks, friends. Blessings.